Good morning and welcome to Ask the Expert. I'm Joe Taylor. This morning, another in the ongoing series of programs presented by the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning. The program, through the Northwest Institute of Research, oversees a grant from the Office of Child Development and Early Learning at the Pennsylvania Department of Human Services and the Department of Education. The goal of the program is to improve the outcomes for young children as they prepare for school. John Poza from the Pennsylvania Key is the host of the program, and he's here with us throughout the series. Good morning, John, and uh, who do we have on the show this morning? Good morning, Joe. This morning we have Kate Newbert Lechner. Uh, Kate is the Youth Theater Education Director at the Erie Playhouse, and she is going to be talking about her creation of Playtime, which is a program that uses theater, the arts, and the boundless creativity and imaginations of preschool children to make books come alive. Now, Playtime is designed to assist children entering kindergarten with a love of books, as well as the building blocks needed to become enthusiastic readers. Welcome, Kate. Well, thank you, John. Well, yeah. you, you serve a lot of different functions um, at the Erie Playhouse, and you may want to tell us a little bit about, because you know we have an audience that stretches uh, wider than the immediate uh, Erie area. So talk to us, to us about the Erie Playhouse, how it involves um, children in productions and the youth theater in general. Yes, well, we are, we are a very busy community theater. We're one of the busiest in the nation. Um, we'll be celebrating our 100th anniversary next year, which we are very excited about. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, and my function as Youth Theater Education Director is to handle, um, in, in addition to our main stage productions, which we do eight main stage plays or uh, musicals a year, we also have three youth productions, which are shows that are performed by um, youth actors ages 5 to 18 for the youth. Um, so I oversee those. I manage, produce, direct those shows, as well as um, doing some outreach. We have lots of outreach that we do um, with the Erie City Schools, going uh, with the Erie City Mission, with lots of other groups as well to get theater, you know, around around and into into all the schools. Because, you know, when we see the arts funding being cut across um, across the board, I, my, my belief when I came into my position was that the, oper- the, the, uh, that the responsibility to give, to give the arts to kids fell, had to fall to someone, and as one of the largest community theaters in the area, that it fell to us, and it fell particularly, particularly to me, which is why I've um, been searching out any way that we can to get theater um, to children of all ages, which led to the creation of Playtime, which is our pre-K program. Now, Playtime, as I understand it, uh, Kate, is that you work with uh, preschool children. Um, It's almost, Mm -hmm. uh, from my understanding, somewhat like a curriculum where you uh, meet uh, uh, in different sessions with the children over a period of time during the school year, and that at the end of the year, um, there's a production that they are that they they that is, are involved that, with. That, that is correct. It's a uh, what the, the way well to, to start the way that it was created um, was uh, we we were working we were doing some work with the United Way, and um, I'm I'm actually a, a parent whose daughter is a part of their Imagination Library, which if anyone is not familiar with that, throughout with the United Way with their Imagination Library, any child between the ages of zero and five years old, if your local United Way participates in the program, uh, you can register with them uh, or online, and your child will receive a free book every year of their life, or I'm sorry, every month of their life from the ages of zero to five years old. Fantastic. And I loved the program. I thought it was a wonderful program because, uh, you know, books are, I mean, obviously we all know how, how wonderful books are and how great it is to get a new book into a child's hand. Um, and with that, but then, I, but then we were looking at some readers' theater options and things like that, and I realized that, you know, these, these kids are so creative, especially at that preschool level. That's how, you know, the, the, they love music. They love dancing. They love being dramatic, which as the mother of a three-year-old, I know how much <laughs> they love being dramatic. Um, and so if we could take those things that those, those things that we work with here at the Playhouse, the things that we work with as theater professionals, um, you know, creating a story, you know, feeling emotion, creating emotion, things like that, and use them with these books, then we could then create um, a, a great interest with these kids. And we know that we want to have them reading at home. 
so that was part of one of the steps of our program. So let me let me backtrack and I'll detail. So the, the first step of our program is is the in school sessions, as you mentioned. So we are doing in the first year of our program, we are in four different um, downtown uh, daycare centers, and we are in one class. Myself and my co-teacher are in one classroom each um, for eight weeks, and we're doing that for three full sessions. So we will, at the end of the school year, we'll have spent 24 weeks with these kids. We do a different book every week, so that's 24 new books that we will have exposed those kids to, that we will have read with them. Um, and we, using the Imagination Library, was key because we've asked all the children and the families in the classroom to have their children registered. So the assumption is that then that book that we've worked on in class will actually be at home. So the child will go home and say, Mom, be excited about, about Llama Llama Red Pajama, and find the book, and bring it over to Mom and Dad, and there's, or Grandma and Grandpa, or whoever an adult is in the house, and be so excited that it will then capture that adult's interest as well, and that adult will sit down and read with them. Because we know that in order to get kids um, ready for school, in order to get them interested in literacy, it also has to happen at the home as well which is why we then implemented the second stage of the program, which is a parent and me session, where we invite the parents to come here to the Playhouse with their children. And it can be the ch all the children in the family. It doesn't just have to be the one that's in our class. And we read a book. For example, this past time, um, we, our first BCD show was called Honk, which is a musical story of the ugly duckling. So we read The Ugly Duckling with the family. We did um, some activities just to kind of give the parents some ideas of, wow, you know, oh, this, these are some fun things that I could do at home with my kids to make these books come alive, um, to, to get the parents more excited about sitting down and reading and using some of these creative techniques to engage, further engage their children in a book. Um, and then we gave them all passes um, to bring their, fam their whole families to come see the show as our guests, which the families all took advantage of, which we were just thrilled about. Um, and then comes the third, the third stage, which, yes, you mentioned we are going to be performing a, um, doing a show here at the Playhouse of one of the Imagination Library books. It's called My Lucky Day. And it is a little half-hour presentation. All of the daycare centers will be invited to come, as well as all of the Imagination Library families in Erie County. They will be invited to come to the show as our guests. They will come see the show. We will also have um, snacks and a parent and me session following the show that anyone in the audience is welcome to stay for. And, um, and we're very excited about that. So, yeah, and that will be in April. With, with kids already competent on, if not addicted, to electronic devices by the time they're three or four years old, is it a challenge to get them to engage in what must seem like boring, slow activities like theater and the arts and, and reading? Um, I, you know, I... I I I, under, I I know I know the uh, know the problem, but I I think I I think that they want to be engaged in this way. And honestly, when we come when I come in the room, it's the, the ones after the first couple weeks they know what's going to happen. And it's Miss Kate, oh, what are we doing? What's in your bag? Because I, <laughs> I have I, I call it my Mary Poppins carpet bag that I carry <laughs> around with me, and I'll pull out the props that we're going to use. And there's always they're always wondering what's going to come next. Um, and I, and I, I really think that if we engage engaging the children at an early age like this, making that that such a, an integral part of their life, um, that then it can carry over as they get older, which I think is what we start to see a lot of that malaise with. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to do theater. I'm gonna. I would rather play Minecraft, which you know, or something like that. Um, but I, I mean, with this, especially with this younger age, I, I don't. I, they are so. They are so eager to engage. They are so eager for knowledge. And I think it's important at a young age um, to, to allow them that creative spirit, to let them know that their imagination is an amazing thing, and to encourage that imagination, be it through theater, be it through books, and, ho most, uh, and hopefully a combination of all of that. One of the things I wanted to ask you, Kate, is, um, you know, with the United Way and the Imagination Library, I don't know if... Uh, you maybe can clarify whether the Imagination Library is affiliated with most United Ways. And secondly, um, the Playtime program, can that be replicated at other preschools outside the Erie area, if not by you and your assistant, uh, where someone from that um, preschool could um, 
basically be trained in, in the program to be able to carry it out in their own communities. Absolutely. Yeah, the amount, um, you, people would need to check with their local United Way to see if they, have, if they are offering the Imagination Library program. Um, I know that a lot, of the, a lot of the United Ways are offering that program now, um, but you would just need to check with your local United Way to see if that program is offered. And absolutely, this program could be duplicated. Um, my assistant and I have already spoken about um, trying, to, trying to get the program trying to get the program out of Erie County and into the hands of other people as well because we have seen, even after just one eight-week session, we have seen the success with these kids. And the teachers have, have told us how, what a difference it has made in some of, with some of these children. Um, so we would absolutely um, love to talk to people about, about the program. And even if your community doesn't have the United Way or the Imagination Library, I still don't think that that should be looked at as a detriment to bringing the program to to you, to the preschool or to the area. But anyone could feel free to contact me um, here at the Erie Playhouse. You can find my information on the website, and I would love to have a conversation about getting this program um, to other communities. I'd like to maybe stay on the word imagination. Uh, mm -hmm. It seems to me pretty much everything is explained and handed to you on an electronic device. and uh, mm -hmm. It seems logical, I think, that imagination must, must suffer. And people would say, well, well, so what? How important is imagination to the intellectual and social growth of, of a child? So what is the relevance, really, of imagination? Well, I think that imagination, I mean, obviously, when, when you're a child, I, I'm a big proponent of let's keep kids kids. I think we see a lot of kids growing up so quickly these days. Um, and I think stripping a child of the ability to dream and imagine um, is, 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 is part of that. And granted, we do, you know, do have some very, you know, very unhappy things that happen in, in, our, in our world. However, and I'm not saying that we should shield our children from that, but I do think that we should allow them to be children and allow them to play and allow them to imagine. And by trying to get them to mature too quickly, we, we strip them of a childhood. So I'm all about, you know, oh my gosh, play, play, play. And I think that when we have an imaginative, creative child, then that, then that, that imaginative, imaginative, creative child grows into a preteen who is still imaginative and creative, grows into a teenager, then grows into an adult. And I think that we see the most innovative things come from these creative individuals. You know, I mean, even if you want to talk about technology, Steve Jobs could not have created what he did if he was not allowed to imagine and to dream. So, and that has to be started from an early age. You know, Absolutely. You have, to dream, you, have, you have to dream big dreams if you want to have success. And if someone's taking that ability to dream from you or that ability to imagine, then you're, you're putting shackles on someone's, on someone's potential. Absolutely. And, and of course, your, the program Playtime um, obviously says it all um, because, you know, obviously the play in terms of the, the theatrical part as well as the play itself and, and having times for children to explore and have enough playtime even in their preschool environment because so often teachers are – so busy with the structured activities and the lesson planning mm -hmm. that often children don't uh, really have the true playtime to explore on their own. And it's certainly a big difference when a child has the time on their own and not being somewhat forced or directed to play as opposed to actually doing it on their own time, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I think the thing that, the thing that I loved about about playtime, and the thing that I love about arts education in general is that it gives, you know, I think a lot of, with, with all the standards and the things that the teachers have to teach and with the core curriculum and things like that, um, you know, we're, 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 we're finding so much that we're teaching to tests and we're not teaching to children. Right. Um, and I, the thing I love about this program and, as I said, about other arts education is that it's giving kids an, a different way to learn. And I, the thing I love about teaching teaching through play is that they're learning, and they don't think they're they don't even know they're learning. Exactly. They're having a, they're having fun, but when we make a child, you know, especially at this age, you know, asking a three year old to sit down at a table, and read a book and be well behaved and and all of that, that that's very hard for them. They have a very short attention span, but asking them to engage in a fun way for twenty minutes um, through a book is is a good way and. 
the, all the teachers have reported to me that they've seen an increase, you know, during the, the free, their the kids' free time, they gravitate to the bookshelf. They're trying to, they're finding the books that, that we've read because I always leave, every book that I read, I always leave in the classroom so that it's there for the kids to explore further. And the teachers say they have seen an increased um, interest in these kids playing with the books and reading to their friends and things like that. And that is play for them. Picking up a book and pretending to be the teacher and pretending to read this book to their friends is, is playtime for them, but we know that it's learning and we know that it's creating the building blocks for, um, for, for a successful, successful transition to kindergarten to be a reader. Absolutely. And Kate, uh, I'd be reluctant if I didn't uh, bring this up about um, your previous background. Of course, for those who don't know, Kate is an actress and um, prior to relocating to Erie, uh, you were a freelance director instructor at various venues in Pittsburgh, including was, Pittsburgh yeah. Youth Ballet, South Park Theater, and Little Lake Theater. And the thing that I also wanted to bring up is before going to Pittsburgh, you worked for Tony Bennett and his son, his manager, Danny, at RPM Productions in New York City. What was that yes, experience like? Got to be fascinating. Um, oh, that was, it was, it was really incredible. Um, you know, honestly... You know, you hear stories about um, about how celebrities are, and if they're, you know, you hear this one's nice and this one's not. I can honestly tell you, everything you hear about how wonderful and kind Tony Bennett is is absolutely true. That man is—he has a heart of gold, and he is apart from his talent, he's just a really super guy. As is his son Danny, who I worked for. Danny is his manager, um, and I was with them for some really, really cool times. It was during um, the release of Tony's first duets album, and mm -hmm. so I got to have some, some really cool experiences. Um, the, one, of, one of the most memorable was standing off stage at Radio City Music Hall next to James Taylor and Katie Lang and watching Tony Bennett sing I Left My Heart in San Francisco wow. on stage in Radio City. So that's, he, those, those are things you don't forget. And he, he's, a, he's a good artist too, isn't he? He is, yeah. He is a he's a painter. Um, his he goes under he paints under the name Benedetto, which is his. Right. And you can he has a website online. He also has a couple books that he's that he's released. Yeah, he's a wonderful artist. Um, he has lots of Italian landscapes that he's done. There is a portrait in it's one of his books that he did of Mickey Rooney, which is it's one of my favorite paintings that I've ever seen. It's gorgeous. The humanity that he captured was incredible. Well, that would be fat. I've got to pick that up. What I don't know what book that was, but. Yeah, that'd be interesting. Make, I wonder, Mickey Rooney, the, the the younger or in his older days when he was uh, in a little in a little in his older days. Ah, um, yeah. and it I'm I'm gonna be hard pressed now because I wasn't. I, oh, I that's okay. I put you on the spot. Didn't that. mean to do that. But um, <laughs> it was it had a foreword written by Mitch Album, so you can yeah, you know, okay, find, yeah. yeah, could find the book that way. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, in, in terms I think we of digress there a little bit. Yeah, too. just a little <laughs> bit. Yeah, no. <laughs> Um, also, getting back to the playtime program, I know that parents are involved in the second part of, of the, the program, but do the parents also participate in the acting? Well, we haven't had any parents get on stage. <laughs> They're welcome to, um, though, correct? They, they are. I mean, with our, uh, here at the Playhouse, we are, as I said, we are a community theater. We are completely um, all volunteer performers, so we, we invite, you know, if, if the parents get it, Think that they they like it. We would love to have them come and audition and be in one of our be in one of our productions. <laughs> and also, we would love to have them take with our parent me session. You know, we teach. We it's not really teaching; it's more modeling. Like, hey, this is what we do to try to give them ideas. So, if they would like to mount a production of um, Llama Llama Red Pajama, I don't know why I keep coming back to that one. <laughs> in um, I think it's because. I think it's because it happens a lot at my house. The little, the little, the little llama that doesn't want to go to bed. Right, right. But, um, <laughs> but um, you know, if they want to mount a production of that in their living room with their kids, then that's awesome. We would love that. So, right. Yeah, we really encourage encourage the parents to 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 become to become actively engaged book readers and performers as well. Speaking of books, uh, I I love books, physical books. I can touch. I can hold. Even. You know, Absolutely. appreciate aesthetically, but uh, obviously, so many more people and young people are using Kindles, and that's a, you know, I'm a dinosaur, so I, I'm in physical books. <laughs> but is there a difference in the learning experience for a young child between a virtual and a physical book? Um, I, you know, I do think that there is. Um, 
especially for a younger child. I mean, my I have I was I have a three year old. I also have a seven year old, and she's beginning to read books on the iPad and things like that. And, but she's reading chapter books, um, you know. And so it, you know, and I'm I'm honestly, it's, it's as long as they're reading is is really. The, the, the key, but I do think with a younger child, there's something about having that, that book in your hand that you can hold up, that you can then play, and uh, you know, I think it would be hard to hold up a Kindle and pretend to read to your friends with that. Um, yeah, I, and I mean, I'm with you. I'm with you, Joe. I mean, I like I like a book, a, a real solid book in my hands that you can look at the pictures, you can get it up close, hold it far away, you can page through, you know, skip to this part of the story or that part of the story. So. I agree. I'm somewhat of a dinosaur <laughs> that way, too. For, for, if, if for any other reason, almost the, the fact that if you collect as a collector of things, to know that mm -hmm. it's on your bookcase, it's there to, to for. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, in, in my house, we have my, my, my daughters have a, a bookcase in their bedroom, and every night we go to the bookcase and they can look at all their books and pick a book. And it's a little harder to do when you're, okay, let's go to our <laughs> Kindle library and let's see what book we have. And Which would be many, I'm sure. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, things haven't changed. I mean, we still are introducing the real books to children at a young age um, to read to them. Um, and I, I certainly hope that continues. But, but we also are, we have to be honest with ourselves, we're reaching that, we're reaching a, a period of where digital and media is important, and it's going to be important for all children, even at younger ages. So we have to face that reality as well. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think we, we don't want to, with with the, with the, the prevalence of, of digital media. I mean, you would never want to, you know, put a child at a at a at a disadvantage right. by not exposing them to that. We do know that children are learning differently today, so mm -hmm. th that's the reality. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Kate, I, I'd really love to see Playtime come to, well, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be selfish and say all 67 counties in Pennsylvania, but <laughs> in reality, well, it is. yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see you branch out and, and, and come introduce this and talk about it to schools um, beyond Erie, which I know you will, and we will help do that to promote it as well, uh, because I think it's just a great thing to, to introduce um, not only the reading part, but the theatrics and theater to to young children. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's it, it is honestly based on a simple concept, but um, I think that the impact that it makes is incredible. You know, we have, and and we're very excited that we've we've been able to 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 begin this here in Erie. Are there any are productions personally that that you're uh, um, preparing for yourself? Are you still acting? I am still acting, yes. Um, I'm going to be, well, I'm, and I direct as well. I'm going to be directing our next Youth Theater show, and then I'll be directing a production of Peter and the Starcatcher here on our main stage. Um, but performance-wise, I will be, um, actually, we're doing a concert with Erie Philharmonic. We are uh, doing a, in, in concert at the Warner Theater, um, a production of My Fair Lady, and I'll be playing Eliza Doolittle. So oh, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Kate. We, we really enjoyed having you on the program. And for, for those who want more information on the Erie Playhouse and the Playtime program in particular and youth theater, you can go on the Erie Playhouse website. Thanks again, Kate. Thank you. And that's our program for today. We'll be back in two weeks at the same time. In the meantime, you can go online to learn more at papromiseforchildren.com. For John Poza and the Northwest Regional Key Program for Quality Early Learning, I'm Joe Taylor. Thank you for listening and have a great day.